discussing a lumbar facet injection. I had um, my second one this past Friday. No, sorry, Monday I had it. And um, prior to getting the first injection, I didn't see any, like I saw a few videos on um, testimonials about the procedure, but most of the videos that I found on YouTube were about um, how the procedure is done. And they were coming from physicians or uh, specialists that probably never had the procedure before. So this is just an informational video of what to expect. Um, a lumbar facet is defined as um, a joint block. Uh, it's, an, it's an injection of a local anesthetic. Um, and an anesthetic is something that numbs whatever area they're gonna put it, put it in. Um, so they inject the local anesthetic into one or more of the small joints located along the side of each vertebrae on both sides of the spine in the lower part of the back. So um, normally you get a lumbar facet if you're having chronic back, lower back pain. It has to be the lower back because that's the only area that it they will inject it. Um, and uh, so basically what they're doing is they're numbing the nerves that could be responsible for that irritation. Now, why are these nerves getting irritated? No one has yet to answer that question for me, but it could be because you're, um, you might have some uh, arthritis. And so uh, when those discs are in between your vertebrae, when they start to shrink, they can start to compress some of the nerves. So I do have some arthritis in my lower back. Um, as some of you may know, I do have lupus and uh, a whole lot of other diagnoses, but I basically focus on lupus. Um, one day I might make videos about those other conditions because they are rare, but uh, lupus is basically the culprit, the main culprit as to why I have all these other disorders. So um, anyway, back to um, what to expect. When you reach your appointment, of course, they're going to take all your information you're sitting in the waiting room. Then they bring you to the back. This is done in, well, this was done in the local office of my um, pain and spine specialist. Uh, they did it there. Some people might have to go to the hospital. I, I'm assuming if their physician's office does not have an area to do surgical procedures. So, Fortunately, my physician office does. So they take you to the back. Um, you have to take off all of your clothes. If you are female, you can keep your bra on. Uh, you do have the option of keeping your underwear on, but I would not advise that because they do use iodine to clean the area or betadine. Same way, it, it, it can stain. So if you're gonna wear underwear, wear dark color underwear. They do try to protect it as much as possible, but you know how it goes. If it's not theirs, they're not treating it like their own. So, uh, yeah, you change your clothes, uh, put on a gown, um, then they go through the procedure with you uh, three times before you even get to the back. Um, you have to be able to tell them in some fashion or form what it is you're there for because this is telling them that you know what procedure you're getting done, as well as preventing them from making any mistakes and giving you another procedure that you didn't come for, that you have some knowledge of the procedure because you have spoken to your physician prior to accepting um, this procedure. Then they'll go over your, you know, all of your regular information, name, and all that stuff, date of birth allergies, medication, current medications. You're not supposed to eat for at least 12 hours prior to the procedure. Um, so if you're gonna get this procedure done, I recommend getting like the first or second appointment, the earliest one you can get. Um, then uh, they'll do all your vital signs, um, insert your IV. Then depending on your doctor's office, it probably took about 10 minutes to do everything for me, the um, 
the uh, pre-surgical procedures. Uh, they it took about 10 minutes for that. Then they wheeled me to the back. Um, and then you might have to walk to the table if you are able to, because some, some people have back pain that kind of debilitates their, um, their lower extremities. So it's hard for them to walk. But if you can walk, they'll tell you to walk to the actual table um, that they're gonna be operating on. So I walk to the table. You're gonna lay face down on the table with your arms out like this. And there's a um, like a cushion that holds your head. Uh, they tell you to remove your mask because they're going to give you oxygen. And um, basically your butt is kind of up in the air <laughs> and your legs, everything is like cushion and it's just so, so you, can, you can't really move uh, your line properly so that they won't hit something that they're not supposed to hit um, and you can actually walk out of the building. Um, so then after they confirm who you are again, what procedure you're getting them, they will administer the anesthesia and they also depend, you know, they, they might do this in different steps for you, but they're going to, um, clean the area with that beta dyne or iodine, um, and then they'll give you your, um, local, your, uh, anesthesia. But you do have the option of not taking the anesthesia. They'll do, they always do a local anesthetic as well, directly on the area where they'll be operating on your skin outside. They'll put a local anesthetic there. But if you don't have like a high pain tolerance, I have a high pain tolerance, okay? I still took the anesthesia. And I'm glad that I did because I wasn't going to do it. And the, um, the, uh, secretary, she's the one that convinced me to take the anesthetic because the, the local anesthetic, I mean, the, sorry, the general anesthetic, because she said she only saw one person that didn't. And he was a, like a large 300 pound man, which really doesn't make a difference if you're 300 pounds or 90 pounds, because if you have a strong, if you have a high pain tolerance, then you're good to go. But for me, uh, I already have enough pain from head to toe all day, every day. I was just not looking for another problem. So I said, let me get it. Um, so the anesthetics that they gave me, um, they gave me Versed and Fentanyl. And the first time, it took a while for me to, to go to sleep. And I wasn't even, I didn't sleep like, I wasn't in that deep sleep. But I'll tell you about that. The second time, I was knocked out. Like, they gave me the anesthetic. And then I remember, um, asked me one more question. And next thing I know, I'm waking up in recovery. So, I don't know if she gave me too much or what, but whatever she did, I'm glad she did it because I didn't feel anything this time. Now, the first time I felt myself wiggling and um, moaning, I heard myself moaning because I could feel not just pressure, I felt pain when they were um, inserting one of the tools on the right side. Um, and when they, I could feel every movement when they were moving it around. I remember hearing myself going, mm, mm, mm. So it was so funny when I went for the second procedure, my doctor said to me, um, just repeat this in your head. Uh, I will stay still. I will stay still. Because the first time you would wiggle it, you would like, and and you wouldn't stop wiggling. He said, we still were able to do what we need to do, but you know, this makes it a little bit more difficult. So if you can try to tell your body to stay still, it would be greatly appreciated. And nobody else said anything. So um, it was just so funny that uh, I really, I wasn't 
under like I should have been. So maybe, I don't know if they gave me less than what they were supposed to give me or what, but anyway. So now that I have had these two procedures, the second procedure, uh, since I just recently had it, I don't really know how it's gonna affect me yet because I'm still in the healing phase where the swelling internally and externally is still going down. This is the first day I feel a lot better um, where I'm not having uh, to restrict my movement. The first time I got it done, prior to the procedure, I had lower back pain daily and it would radiate to the right or left hip, sometimes both at the same time and it would shoot down my leg to my knees. Um, and then I also had a lot of upper back pain and arm pain. <sighs> About a week and a half after the first procedure, I started noticing results. Um, my hip pain was gone completely. My lower back pain was gone completely. And I also noticed that I had more energy and I was able to sit upright easier without pain and um my shoulder pain improved my neck pain improved i still have neck pain but it's nothing like it was prior to the procedure um now about a month after the procedure the first procedure i did start to feel that hip pain again like it would be sharp pains um but still, it was nothing like it was before, so I'm grateful. Now, with this recent um, procedure, I noticed yesterday when I was driving, I had sharp pains in my lower back and in my hips. And uh, my feet, my, like my foot's kind of dragging a little bit. So I'm not too worried about it just yet because it's just been a few days. The other procedure took a week and a half. So I'm still just trying to wait and be positive. Uh, I, the back pain, I mean the neck pain, the upper back pain, the arm pain has improved as well. Still, I um, haven't seen much of a change with that. Um, and I do have more energy once again. Um, I haven't had to take my Percocet yesterday. I think I took it yesterday but no I didn't because I didn't take any last night yeah I didn't have to take it yesterday so far today I don't have to take it but I do feel some pain in my lower back um so sitting for long periods of time right now and hopefully it's temporary temporary sitting for long periods of time right now um it's still a little uncomfortable but we'll see in a week and a half and I can do an update video uh next week um to let you know how that goes so anyway fast forward now that i've gotten the second procedure if this one works because these are temporary um fixes it's supposed to last approximately about 30 days uh some people might have longer um better results and, and they have um relief for a longer period of time so the next step after this would be to have the nerves like basically um, killed, kind of like, I guess you can say. Um, they'll have them numb permanently, okay? Let's say that. That procedure is supposed to last at least a year. But the issue with that is once that wears off, you have to do it again and again and again. It's might become like a life lifelong thing so these procedures are really temporary relief there's no permanent solution there's no um cure so all you can do is hope and pray but also um i'm trying to change my diet so that i'm having more anti-inflammatory I'm eating more anti-inflammatory foods to help with the swelling internally all over my body so then that would help decrease some of that pain that I feel. Um, so I've come to terms with 
being a teen for the rest of my life. I'm not angry about it. Um, I just use it as a tool for other people, for encouragement. So I still work. I'm a mother. Um, so it's the dependent to watch after and um, that keeps me busy. Um, I am attempting to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. And sometimes I don't have the energy to do the things that I would love to be able to do and make things go a lot faster, but I have learned to have a lot of patience in doing so because I have to listen to my body. And a lot of these things that I'm going through is because I push myself too hard at times. Um, instead of listening to my body tell me, no, we can't do this today, what do I do? Pop a pain pill or have a, like whatever pain pills I'm on because I've been on several at the same time, uh, different times in my life. Doctors trying to figure out which one will work. So I would just pop pill, go to work, do what I have to do, and then suffer later. So now that I'm old and, and I would I would say a little smarter. Somebody else might beg to differ, but I'm gonna say smarter. Um, I am learning how to say no and listen to my body more and try to um, not take on so much. So yeah, that's going into a tangent. So that's where we're gonna end this video. I will do an update next week on the effect of the second procedure and see where I'm at with that um, as far as pain level goes. Today I would rate my pain at a, I would say a good seven because these pains are all over my back. But life goes on. So stay encouraged and I will be back.